One Man, One Mission, to rid the world of chronic anxiety once and for all. The Anxiety Guy, Dennis Simsek, shares his personal transformation from living a life filled with overwhelming worry to becoming a full-fledged positivity machine. A leading authority in generalized anxiety, Dennis gets to the truth of your mental health challenges and sets you on a path to transforming each and every area of your life. Here he is, the one and only, The Anxiety Guy. Welcome to episode number 52. I'm Dennis Simsek and this is the Anxiety Guy podcast. Thank you for being a part of it, guys. You anxious warriors out there, you're not victims, you are warriors. Today we're talking about the top 10 core principles that you need to follow in order to become the greatest version of you, to become your best self. Before that, head over to Facebook, like our Facebook page under The Anxiety Guy. I started a Sunday routine with those people that I would do a Facebook Live episode every Sunday answering all of your questions. So if you're looking for a CBT slash NLP practitioner to answer some of your valued questions about anxiety and life, head on over there, like that page, see you every Sunday. Now today, these principles should be followed in life, these NLP principles. And if you follow these, you're gonna find that you become much more flexible in your thinking, much more flexible in your actions, and life just begins to flow for you. It doesn't feel like you're being challenged constantly every single minute of your life and you're looking at everything as this possible huge danger or potential threat to you but in fact you're looking at life and all these um, these events differently your perception is changing so I want to get right into these top 10 core principles guys so we can begin changing your life becoming the best version of you now the first one is the map is not the territory what does that mean that means that each and every person is unique Each and every person is unique. When someone comes up to you and says something that doesn't stay in line with your checklist, your values, your beliefs, what do we tend to do? We tend to break rapport with that person. We tend to label that person as being bad, you know, um, dangerous, unhealthy, whatever it is. But we must understand that when it comes to this life, it's easier to change our personal map than to change the world. It's easier to change our perceptions of what we see and the events that happen in our life than to change the world, to try to change other people. So by perceiving things differently and in a different way, and to think to ourselves that yes, we in fact have flexibility in our thinking, our beliefs and our actions, things start to roll for us, not against us. But this is very, very important for you to understand that in fact you do have choices. You do not have to react in anger all the time. You do not have to react in fear all the time and doubt, okay? You have choices, understand that buy into this idea that the map is not the territory. Number two is every experience has a structure. When we change the pattern or structure, our experiences will automatically change. So that means that, for example, having a panic attack. A lot of people think that I have panic attacks out of the blue when in fact there's a structure or a pattern that preceded the panic attack that was in place that led to the panic attack. So things don't just happen. There's a there's a pattern of thoughts, there's a pattern of beliefs, there's a certain checklist that everybody has about everything in their lives and when those checklists are not met up we tend to look at an event as being bad or dangerous or whatever it is. So understand that every experience has a structure behind it. Things don't just happen. There's a chain of events that occur in order for that end result to happen. Okay? Things don't just happen. There is no such thing as a coincidence. Okay? Experience has a structure. Number three is, 
If one person can do something, anyone can learn to do it. Now, learning this idea, understanding this idea is huge because we tend to have so much doubt about our own capabilities. We come to this planet as babies, fearless, fearless. We tackle everything from walking to eating to relationships with people to understanding things better. We are constantly challenged and we rise up to every single challenge out there. Now, understand that if you have anxiety and you've been suffering for months or years, there are people out there that have had the same chronic issues that you have, okay? And those people have found ways, most likely through CBT and NLP, to overcome their anxiety. So if one person can do something, anyone can learn to do it, okay? We come to this world as equals. We are more connected than we actually believe, okay? Understand that you have all the resources within you to create any change you want in your life. Number four, there is no such thing as failure. There is only feedback. And sometimes this is called failing forward. And I love that term. I love the idea of failing forward because... Even when you're failing and, and learning from that so-called failure and understanding that it's not a failure but it's a feedback for the next action that you're going to take, that's powerful. You are continuously moving forward. You are failing forward. And that, my friends, is a good thing. Okay. Look at all the people that you look up to in today's life in today's world okay your role models the people you mirror yourself around those people have failed so many goddamn times until they've actually succeeded it's ridiculous um, challenge that they wanted to set for themselves if they wanted to reach a goal or a dream in their lives they weren't confident they got in there they challenged themselves and they were relentless they were relentless in their pursuit of answers and just like you with anxiety, if you let your subconscious mind, who has, in fact, the cognitive rationale of a 10-year-old, run your life, it's going to run your life to the ground, okay? You must understand that in order to step up, in order to step up to this challenge, you must rise and you must understand that feeling forward is important. Practice, don't test. When you learn a new skill, when you have a new mindset, practice that. The more repetitions you get in, the greater the successes, the greater movement forward for you. Every success is huge. Celebrate those. So understand again that there's no such thing as failure. You are not broken. You are not a failure. You are just receiving feedback. Number five is the mind and body are parts of the same system. When we learn to change either one of these guys, we have learned to change the other one, okay? So understand that people out there who are working with their thought processes, I'm trying to change the patterns of thoughts, my beliefs. I'm trying to lessen these identity statements I make about myself. I am worthless, for example. That's fantastic. As a CBT practitioner myself, I had to buy into the idea that I was, in fact, a complete system. When my mind, my thoughts were working in unison towards a certain goal, when I was becoming more positive, when I was changing my perceptions, when I was not fighting but working with my anxiety, things started to happen. My body language started to change. My breathing started to change. Now, the opposite is true as well. If you change your body posture, if you change your breathing patterns, if you change the way your hand gestures work while you're conversing with somebody, then your thoughts are going to change as well and your beliefs change. Therefore, your emotional consequence changes. So notice 
that when one changes, the other changes. The mind and body are connected, okay? Understand that if you have anxiety, if you tackle both, you are powerful. And if you add imagination to that, you are triple powerful. If you're only changing your thought processes, you're only doing one third of your capability. Okay, rapid change doesn't happen until you begin to use your mind, body, and imagination to overcome anxiety, to become your greatest self. Okay, very, very, very important, guys. Number six, people already have all the resources they need, mental images inner voices, sensations, and feelings are in fact the building blocks of all our mental and physical resources. We can use these to build up any thought, feeling, or skill that we want. Then we can place them in our lives where we want or need them the most. So understand that within you, you have all the resources you need in order to create that change you desire. Okay? You don't need the support of other people. In fact, I strongly suggest you start with yourself. You start with having a talk with yourself. Hey self, I know I'm suffering from anxiety. I know I'm trying to run. I know I'm trying to fight this feeling. I know I'm trying to look for coping methods. But here's the thing, the more I understand my anxiety, the more I understand my fight or flight response, the more I understand the reptilian brain, the part of my brain that works in unconscious ways, the better I understand myself and the quicker I can create this change. So start with you, have a talk with yourself, recognize what's not working and understand that you in your body and in your mind have the capability to create the change you want in an instant. When you make that decision to change, when you get angry enough at your anxious side and say not another day, that's when change starts to happen, guys. So understand that you have all the resources within you to change. All you have to do is possibly do the opposite of what you're doing today to create that change, okay? What you're doing is not working. It's not working. If you have anxiety and you can rate that at, a, at an eight, nine, and 10, you're not truly living, okay? You're coping, you're getting by. In order to lessen that, in order to eliminate that, you must start understanding Okay, the End the Anxiety program and anxietyexit.com will help you understand and overcome your anxiety. Head over, start it. Number seven, we are always communicating whether we know it or not. Powerful. 95% of our communications are nonverbal. A sigh, a smile, a look, are all communications. These are all sending information to your subconscious mind and you are training your mind. Your unconscious mind never stops working. Okay? Understand that. And it's really, really important that you guys understand that even when you don't say anything, you are still communicating with people and the universe. Trust me. When you're slouched over and you're depressed, the universe is taking notes. If it's giving you more of that, it's giving you things that are in line with what your mind, body, and spirit are projecting, okay? Understand that 95% of our communications are non-verbal, powerful, powerful. You don't have to say anything for the world and other people to understand you, okay? You can walk into an office, and you've got 10 people in that meeting, and depending on what your breathing pattern's like, depending on what your posture's like, people will truly start to read you. And when they read you, make sure that they read the optimistic, powerful warrior you. What are you doing today? Are you acting more like the victim, or are you acting more like the warrior? Do you even understand what the victim is? Do you understand their characteristics? Do you understand their traits? Do you understand what the warrior is? 
Who is this person? Where did they come from? How do they walk? How do they talk? Do things in line with the warrior. That's your job today. Number nine. The meaning of your communication is the response that you get. Now, others will receive what we say and do through their mental map of the world. Remember, the map is not the territory. Everybody's perceptions are different. So when you communicate with someone, the basis, the baseline of that communication is what you are receiving from the other person. When someone, when, when you say to someone that, um, how's your day going? And they go, well, the moon is in fact flat, okay? Therefore, the conversation is revolved around the moon being flat. So that person perceived your question as being, what does the moon look like? Okay, so the meaning of the conversation is the response that you get from somebody. You need to create rapport with people if you want to build your relationships, if you want to begin becoming your greatest self. Okay, you must step out of this rut, this comfort zone, and you must start to apply some of the stuff that you're learning. Okay, these 10 rules are rules that you need to live by. Okay, number nine. Underlying almost every behavior is a positive intent. Now, this one is difficult to understand, but once you grasp it, it is huge. Now, here's the thing. As a child, I went through verbal and physical abuse from my father on a daily basis. Back then, he was the most violent hurtful person on this planet okay I hated him I hated him deeply okay but little did I understand that he was basically going through life with the information that he had at his disposal that's the problem is that we don't see the positive intent behind what was going on he was in fact applying what he knew best and that was, you know, the information that he had there. So he was loving, but he was showing it in a different way. He was caring, but I truly didn't understand that. Okay, all I saw was this abuse. Okay, but I needed to look deeper. Most hurtful, harmful, and even thoughtless behaviors were originally intended to have a positive purpose. It doesn't have to be true. The benefits come from believing that it is true. I, I talk about this idea of reframing. Neuroscience has proven that every time we revisit a memory, it changes. So if a memory constantly changes and you have a bad memory about something, why not change it? Why not change it to serve you? Why not look at something differently? Why not perceive it differently? And, and, and write your own story for what happened. To see the positive intent of whatever behavior that person in your life was trying to create in your life. Okay, Number 10. People are always making the best choices available to them. We are all capable of self-defeating behavior at times. The problem most of the time is that people don't see the choices available to them in that moment. They don't see the choices available to them in that moment because we just don't think. So guys, as you go through this life, understand that everybody is doing the best they can with the information that they have. Some people take in information, okay, it gets deleted, distorted, and generalized in their minds, okay, through the filters that we have pl in place in our minds. And we must not be so harsh and critical about what people say or what people do. These are just people that are saying things and doing things that are, they're basically behaviors and their beliefs. They are not what they truly are, who they are as people. They are just acting in line with what they think is best in that moment. Understand this. It's powerful. A behavior does not in fact mean that that is their persona or your persona or your identity. It is just a behavior. A thought is just a thought. A belief is just a belief. 
An emotion is just an emotion. But what truly is an emotion? When you get a feeling, when you get an emotion, that is your subconscious mind telling you that there's something you need to deal with. So deal with it. Deal with it. Deal with that root problem. Don't just handle the symptom. Deal with the root problem. But if we're going to change ourselves, if we're going to help other people, guys, we need to understand that we have to be less critical of what people say and do. They are just acting in line with what they think is best. You are more than anxiety. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next episode. Head over to YouTube. Be a subscriber. I'd love to connect with you through your comments on YouTube, guys. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you in episode number 53. Thanks for being an important part of the Anxiety Guy podcast community. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a positive rate and review. If you're searching for further support on your road to recovery from anxiety, head over to anxietyexit.com and take part in the powerful End the Anxiety program based around the CBT model. If you're searching for a more one-on-one -on -one approach, you can sign up now for personal coaching sessions with Dennis via Skype. Remember, you are more than anxiety. See you in the next episode.